So the question is, how hard is it to find good jazz guitars right now? Wow, a good question. You know, I think it's really hard. Um, number one, a consumer, let's say, in some town in the Midwest, doesn't can't go to. Uh, it's really hard to find a store that even carries anything like this. Uh, your local music stores, good grief, they're just uh, carrying low-line student student guitars, and then you might have a guitar center, and their uh, their money is all in the Strats and the Les Pauls and the SGs and all that stuff, uh, and you, you know arch tops uh, except for the Ibanez Art Core are non-existent. So uh, when you get on, so obviously you got to look online. So then it's a kind of a crapshoot. I mean, what do I want? Do I want a 16 inch, a 17 inch, a 18 inch? How deep do I want it? You know, because they come in all shapes and sizes. So there's that first deciding what you really want. And it takes a while to figure that out. Um, but most people, uh, you know, the guitars that, that I seek out are ones that I think that other people are going to like because I like them, you know. Um, there's a lot of them I don't buy and try to uh, fix up and sell for my students. And then there's a lot that I do because I know what I'm getting. Now, the problem is, is... Number one, the price. The price goes is all over the map, and it keeps going up. If you, it's like being in real estate. You know, the same house on the same street, two months later now is ten grand higher. It's like, how does that work? I mean, things are the same thing with guitars. All of a sudden, these guitars are getting more and more and more expensive. Most guitar manufacturers don't make a whole lot of money on archtop guitars, that's why they shy away from them. Uh, companies like Heritage, Gibson, uh, Eastman, Guild, you know, they made, uh, of course, Guild now doesn't make an American one, I don't believe, uh, archtop, but most of these guys, you know, it's, it's becoming less and less part of their line. Eastman used to be exclusively archtop guitars. Now they're getting into solid bodies. And so they're trying to capture the rock and roll market. So, you know, I'm old when I say the word rock and roll. Um, <clears throat> so keeping up with the prices is really rough. And that I have the hardest time with that because I'll look at a guitar and I think, well, wait a minute, I just bought one of those six months ago and it was, uh, you know, Three, four hundred bucks cheaper. What's what the heck is going on? You know, so trying to adjust the pricing. I don't know how some of these guys do it that have been in this the business of uh, buying and selling guitars for so long. How they can adjust their numbers on a daily basis. It's rough. So yeah, I would say it's very hard for a jazz guitarist to find a guitar that. Uh, that they're going to know and love uh, unless they get it from a source that can speak for them. So, you know. What's the deal with like Heritage and, and Eastman? You can't just go buy a brand new Eastman or a Heritage off their site, right? Nope, not any, no. Uh, um, Heritage started to sell to the consumer, I, but now everything is Nothing's in stock. Everything's so back ordered, you know. Uh, I ordered a guitar, a heritage guitar for a fella. It took six months to get. I've ordered uh, Eastman's and uh, it's taken six, eight, a year to get. And uh, they're just so back ordered with things. Um, one time when I spoke to the rep, hey, we just got a shipment in. Got 700 guitars that that we're trying to fulfill the orders. We don't have anything we can sell you. They're all spoken for. So it's like, holy crap. <laughs> you know, the market has just gone crazy. So, you know, back in the day when, when I was young, you know, I had, uh, I had a Telecaster, 
a 335 and a, and a 175, right? One for bend and strings, you know, the 335 bend and strings and playing a variety of music and then one jazz guitar. Nowadays, guys have 10, 20 guitars, you know what I mean? So uh, it's kind of a weird, weird thing. Um, I should talk, I got about 40. So, uh, but that, that's what's happening with the market. People are buying more and more guitars and uh, you'd think they'd uh, want to get rid of them, but a lot of people don't because they've sold their guitar, you know, 20 years ago and now they look at the price and think, oh my God. So I'm just going to keep on with this. I don't need the money. Why should I sell it? So I think that's what's happening now. So a lot of, I don't want to call it hoarding, but I want to call it collecting. A lot of guys are collecting guitars. You know, there was a time when vintage guitars did go down in, in value. Yeah, um, they took a hit, but it doesn't take long. It comes right back and goes way beyond where it was. So it's just, just like real estate or any collectible. Uh, Cars. Look at cars. My God, cars are, you know, check out a 70 Chevelle convertible. See what it was two years ago and how much it is now. It's like crazy. So <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Maybe if we have a big giant depression, things are going to fall, you know, and everybody will be broke. But uh, I don't see that happening. So things are, are going to get higher and higher. Now, the thing about... One argument has always been that guys, the younger guys coming up, aren't going to have the desire to own some of the vintage instruments or the, you know. And I, I think that's not true. I, I a lot of younger guys, I get calls from all the time. I've sold a lot of instruments to younger people. And... Uh, I think if, if when they see a guitar that's being played by the person they like, you know, Joe Pass or George Benson or whoever, Kenny Burrell, John Pisano, who knows who, they want those guitars because that's the sound they're going for. So uh, I don't see those recordings going away. And when, if those recordings are still around, the guitars will be too. Uh, does that make sense? So then... That's it, probably. That's it in a nutshell. They're hard to get nowadays. The prices are going up. And I don't think they're going to be going down anytime soon. But there is the thing called the Severson curse, which means if I say something, it does the opposite. So who knows? You're on your own. Just enjoy the guitar. Make music. Have fun. Okay, I like a guitar when I open up the case and I look at it, I think, oh, wow. That is so cool. And I don't want to put it down. So that's what I look for. Hi, Rich here again. I just wanted to say thanks for watching. And if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can see all the guitar videos I put out each week. If you want more lessons right now, I have hundreds of them at guitarcollegelibrary.com. And if you want to learn jazz, hey, check out my course, Jazz Guitar Improv. You'll see the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon.